Hi folks, welcome back. Do you know how mugging up a topic is different from understanding it? My name is Anuj. Keep watching this video on object oriented approach and you will get the answer. Let me ask you a simple question. How to prepare a bale, the famous Indian snack? You may assume that the required bale quantity is 400 gram. Well, this could be most probable answer. We need some ingredients like onion, tomato, roasted groundnuts, lemon, tamarind chutney. Then take a container for bale. Put 200 grams of puffed rice in the container. Add 100 gram of sev to it. Then add 5 tablespoon of mint chutney and so on. Finally, mix the content in the container. Then serve about 100 gram per plate. Very straightforward, isn't it? So can we automate the process and get it done by machine? Yes, we can. Write the algorithm and feed the same to a robot. Now, if someone is looking for more spicy bale, then what to do? Well, we need to add few extra spoons of chutney and rewrite the algorithm. What if we want to use some different kind of container? Will that affect the steps? Which one? It may affect the way ingredients can be added or mixed or taken out for serving, isn't it? Rewriting these statements in algorithm are risky since it may affect other steps accidentally and machine may stop working. Now for a moment, think about why making the bale more spicy was not so complicated for human brain. Or when the container is changed, we did not have to relearn the entire recipe. Well, if someone mugs up the recipe by heart without understanding it, he or she will face similar problems. However, the creative intelligent human brain does not memorize the process as sequential steps from the recipe book. It takes a better approach. Step 1. On reading the procedure, which is nothing but recipe here, our brain understands and creates different entities. First entity is bale container, which contains the object of bale. Now, Bell template is understood with various ingredient properties. Then the brain tries to figure out how these entities are going to interact with each other. In the second step, brain understands how to maintain the right quantity of these properties. For example, salt should be added carefully. When we model this behavior of brain in a software, we will get a bell class with methods that control the access to the property ingredients. The container allows to accommodate bale add ingredients, mix the ingredients and take out some quantity of bale. After separating these entities, now some operational steps are memorized. This is step 3, which begins with creation of object of container. Next, make this container as placeholder for bale. Note that we have only empty template inside this container so far which is a logical structure without any physical content. It's like a film director who knows what is going to happen, at which place, at what time. Then we keep on adding ingredients to bale via add ingredient mechanism provided by bale container. Once we know that a container will essentially have this behavior, then actual container, even if replaced, doesn't affect main procedure. Since the detailing of how exactly the methods will work is encapsulated inside that particular entity. For example, if we change the container to a special container with sophisticated machine parts to mix the bale. Even then, the procedure will talk about what to do, which will be nothing but a method called to mix ingredients. But how to do is taken care by object itself. Finally, container also allows to get a required quantity of bale. The recipe is same. However, the design approach is more flexible this time. It includes separation of what and how operations. This is known as object oriented approach. The bell structure is now more intuitive where we can add extra spoon of chutney in a controlled fashion with assurance about not affecting any other ingredients. So the design is more robust this time. Now let us see one more example. How do we calculate volume of a box? We measure length, breadth, height, multiply them to get a volume. This is normal sequential procedure. Do we see any entity here? That's right. We have box entity with length, breadth and height as properties. So let us create a class out of it. There is no box without these properties. So let us take input values from creator of the box to initialize the properties. Next, what do we want from this entity is its volume. 
the box has volume sounds like box has length or height which means volume is a property of box but wait a minute we did not provide any property value it is calculated internally from the primary properties such a property is known as derived property what do we want to do with the result we want to print all the learners please pay attention here the get volume method should not print the volume since that is not its responsibility what to do with the result is responsibility of the caller the caller may want to use this value for some other purpose instead of printing thus we can see that what and how part of procedure are clearly separated this is object oriented approach so which approach is better well it depends if taking three parameter values and multiplying them to get the result is the only thing we want to do then no need to create box object however often the life is not so simple consider that there are 100 different boxes whose volume is supposed to be calculated once the box class is created we can create 100 different instances of the same now in this scenario if someone decides to change the formula for volume for instance assume that the answer as of now is in cubic centimeters but as per new business requirement it should be calculated in cubic millimeters when we use box class then all we need to do is change the formula at one place that is inside the get volume method moreover this code structure is easy to read hence easy to spot the problems if any in this way maintenance of the code for changing requirement becomes easy this is the biggest advantage for commercial code since market conditions change all the time leading to change in the requirement from a software the change to one part of the code should have minimal impact on another part that's the objective every developer tries to achieve this is very well supported by object oriented code on the other hand impact of changing requirement on procedural code is very high which leads to introduction of human error too note that the box class just provides the structure it does not have any one box specific data which means once the class is written any other user can reuse it which may not be possible with procedural code since what and how part are merged together this feature of object oriented programming is called as code reusability now if we want to add a method that calculates surface area then it can be added to the class thus capability of the class can be easily extended this is called extensibility in procedural code the repetition of code to some extent is avoided by writing functions such generic functions which can be used across multiple program are moved to a library however the data is passed every time from caller since the library functions do not retain the data it contains only processing logic let us see what happens when we want to calculate volume and surface area of two boxes we need to define two sets of input parameters and call the library functions twice once for each set in object oriented code we need to create two objects and call their instance methods now let us see how both the approaches handle invalid inputs in procedural code we need to provide exception handling for each function the object oriented code on other hand validates the data at the time of initialization itself If invalid input is provided an exception is thrown and the instance itself is not created thus preventing the problem at entry level makes the code more robust now let us see what happens in case of human error say by mistake someone changes value of length 1 to 8 since the data is not invalid there won't be any exception thrown in the next function call but the value of area 1 will be wrong On the other hand assigning value to box 1 dot length will result in syntax error since the encapsulation hides the private data getting an error at compile time or an exception at run time is good since it reveals the problem instead of allowing it to pass on the java code for box class looks like this in procedural approach we have a set of procedure that operates on a set of data sequentially so data and procedure are two different things however in object oriented approach data and implementation logic are clubbed together to make a single object such multiple object interact with each other to create a system 
where they pass message to each other by way of method calls or events and signaling. In other words, procedural approach is like assembly line where processing and forwarding is done. Whereas in object oriented approach, encapsulation and delegation of responsibility is designed with objects and the user of object, which can be another class, would trigger or invoke an object behavior by message passing. The world around us is full of entities. In order to model them, all we need to do is identify them, their properties and their behaviors. And the good news is, it is our brain's natural way. Object oriented approach is a way of designing. Hmm. So if that is true, then can we apply the same to some unconventional area like story writing? Let us see how to write a story using object oriented approach. First, create some characters. Provide them with some properties like their cultural background, family history, educational background, financial status, occupation, attitude, passion, strength, weaknesses, etc. Then provide backdrop of the story with properties like location and time. Trigger the story with unusual incident from main method. Let the character interact with each other in this situation message passing. Observe them as an audience and the story will be automatically written. How cool is that? On the other hand, you may take procedural approach to write autobiography. Let us see the relationship between two terms, object oriented approach and object oriented programming. Object oriented approach is a strategy adopted to analyze the requirement and design the solution in object oriented way. Whereas the object oriented programming is about implementing the object oriented design in terms of code. Now let us summarize our understanding between object oriented programming and procedural programming. Object oriented programming is designed around data which is stored inside the object. Whereas procedural programming is designed around action and logic. In object oriented programming, the logic about how to do is embedded inside object triggered by what to do. This is carried out by message passing, which is a form of communication between objects. Whereas in procedural programming, there is no such logical separation. A series of logical procedures process and pass on the data to produce output. When compared with procedural approach, the object oriented approach is more intuitive since it is natural to intellectual human brain. Other advantages are data security, robustness, flexibility, extensibility, all these lead to better maintainability. Note that when the speed of execution is very crucial, memory constraints are very high, like in microcontroller or device driver programming, where the code is small and changes are not so frequent. Procedural code is recommended. This is because object oriented code comes with extra memory requirement and they are little slower than the procedural code. However, this can be neglected very well when compared with gained advantages, especially when the processor and RAM availability on a general purpose operating system are not a constraint anymore. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comment.